Hi everybody, it's George from, from DinosaurGeorge.com. Uh, Hope, my friend Hope from Verona, Wisconsin says, Hi Dinosaur George, I was wondering if you have your own cartoon show. Um, Hope, we are working on a cartoon. Uh, I'll put a little segment in this video if I can find a segment to put in there so you can see it. Hopefully we'll find a network that's interested and we'll start having a uh, weekly kids cartoon show. Uh, it's really kind of cool. All right, Brendan from Morris, New York writes, my sister would like to know what evidence supports the theory that birds are descendants from dinosaurs. Brendan, what we do when we look at prehistoric life and we compare it to modern life, all we can really look at is the skeletal design and what we find is that predatory dinosaurs are very, very similar in skeletal design to modern birds. So we know that there's a relationship between the two. When you really look close and you really pay attention to each individual bone, um, modern birds are so much like prehistoric predatory dinosaurs that some scientists suggest that birds should be reclassified as modern dinosaurs. So it's the skeletal design that tells us that predatory dinosaurs and modern day birds are very closely related. Now let me tell you this, there were birds alive at the time that dinosaurs were around at the end of the Cretaceous. So it's not that predatory dinosaurs became birds because they're living at the same time in the same place. What it suggests is that further back in time, there's another ancestor who was similar to birds and similar to predatory dinosaurs, and they kind of split, but they still are very closely related. Adam from Cincinnati, Ohio wants to know, how did the dinosaurs die? They died like this. <laughs> I'm kidding you. Uh, Adam, the most current evidence that we have suggests that dinosaurs died because of global climate change. A huge asteroid struck the Earth down in the South American area of the Yucatan Peninsula. And that impact caused such a dramatic change in the environment that dinosaurs were unable to deal with it and they went extinct. So did a lot of other animals. Now certainly there were some other uh, animals that survived it fine, uh, but what we believe is for whatever reason the dinosaurs were not capable of being able to deal with it and so they became extinct. Zach from Mesa, Arizona says, Hi, Dinosaur George. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, Zach. That's very kind of you. I am doing well. Do you know of any kind of prehistoric tortoise larger than the Galapagos tortoise? You know, Zach, yes, there is. There's a couple of them. Uh, boy, I wish I could remember their name. I think one of them's name was Testudo, and he's a big dude. Uh, he was much bigger than the modern-day Galapagos turtle. There was a land tortoise that... Uh, lived in the Nebraska area during the Oligocene period. He was about the size of a car, a Volkswagen Beetle. He was huge. If you go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the pictures page, and then tab down and look at the part where I went to New York. There's a picture of a giant tortoise, I think, on that page. Uh, you can see an image of a giant tortoise, and I think his name is in front of there. Again, I think I know it's not stylomized. I don't think he got that big. I think his name was Testudo, and he was a big, big dude. Okay, Hamza, my friend from Banks, Oregon, said, uh, how did mankind first find dinosaurs? Well, Hamza, uh, we don't really know for certain because early East man didn't necessarily keep uh, records of, of, their, um, of their excursions and what they found. Um, my best guess would be that the very first people found bones in the ground. We know uh, that some people found bones and thought they belonged to giant humans. They even found the skull of a woolly mammoth and thought it was the head of a cyclops. So uh, they've been, uh, for, for thousands of years, people have been finding them. It's just hard to really determine how they found the first one. Uh, Rodrigo from Monterey, Mexico. Uh, hi, Mr. Blasting, it's me again. Rodrigo, thank you so much for being so courteous, but you can call me Dinosaur George or call me George or call me DG. That's absolutely fine, but thank you so much for uh, being so polite. Uh, he said, thank you very much for answering my question, sir. Again, incredible manners, and it's my pleasure to answer your questions. He said, but I have a tough one. How do paleontologists classify dinosaurs and other reptiles into their perspective time? Um, that, that is a very good question. What we do is each individual layer of dirt and rock is sort of like a page in a book. And so what happens, Rodrigo, is we can go in and we can test the individual minerals within different layers and get a pretty accurate idea of how old those minerals are. That in turn gives us a pretty accurate idea of how old the entire layer is. So then once we've gone in 
and geologists have told us how old each layer is, then anything we find within that layer tells us that that animal should be the same age as that layer of rock. And so, it, it, again, it's like a big book. Uh, turn the earth on its side and cut through it, you see different layers. And so each layer, if we know how old it is, then we can give a grouping of those layers a name like Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Those names just simply mean that within that group are different pages of our book. So it just depends on what layer or formation we find them in, and that's what classifies what time period they lived in. Uh, Steve from Westminster, California. He said, I went into one of the small antique shops in his area, and inside this shop, the owner sells all kinds of old things. I saw an old tooth. Uh, the owner told me it's a dinosaur tooth. Uh, he basically wants to know if I, can, if I would be able to help him figure out if it's real or not. Well, that's a great question. Let me tell you this, Stephen. I go to eBay sometimes, and I am appalled at the fake fossils that they're selling as authentic. It is unbelievable. It's a huge industry, and the scammers are out there in force, and they will basically try to rip you off. So uh, I would suggest you do a couple of things. Um, if you can, get a very up-close picture of it and email it to me at contact at dinosaurgeorge.com and I'll be glad to look at it for you and try to give you my best assessment. But um, the way to determine is pick it up. If it's heavy and it feels like it's made of rock, then it's a pretty good indication that it could be a real fossil. But again, uh, you can carve rock, so that doesn't really tell you anything. Uh, you can look at the serrations. Uh, he also wants to know if I could give him an idea of what it would, what it would cost. Cost is absolutely determined by the species and by the condition. So you can find teeth from Morocco of Spinosaurus and they're as cheap as 20 and $30. Or uh, you can find uh, Tyrannosaurus teeth that are worth $1,000 an inch. So what would be determined is what the species is, second what the condition is. Uh, send me a picture if you can and I'll do my best to try to identify it for you. And finally, Brittany from Melbourne, Victoria, Australia uh, wants to know, how old could Brachiosaurus live to? Uh, you know, Brittany, uh, my best guess, based on all the studies that I've ever seen, it suggests that these big sauropods, Brachiosaurus is a sauropod, it suggests that they may have been able to live as old as two or three hundred years. Now, that sounds amazing, but if you think about it, uh, some giant tortoises can live to be a hundred years old. Some crocodiles can live to be that old. So it's not that unusual in the animal kingdom that something could grow to live that old. And when you look at their size, you figure, look, man, these things are huge. And so, um, you know, it makes sense that it would take them a couple of hundred years to reach adult size. So I would not be surprised if Brachiosaurus or some of the other giants couldn't possibly live to be 300 years old. All right, that's it for this segment. If you have a question you want to send to me, go to DinosaurGeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Send me your question. I will suggest, I'll make a couple of suggestions. Try to keep your questions kind of short because I get over a thousand questions a month and it's just impossible for me to answer them all. And if I open up your email and it's a really, really, really long question, it's just very hard for me to be able to read through it all. I try, but it's just very hard. Um, while you're there, sign up for our free newsletter every month. I send out a newsletter with really cool uh, stories and interviews and really neat stuff. Um, until the next time, thank you all for writing to me. Uh, take care of yourselves, take care of the people around you, and remember, practice your reading and practice your manners because those two things are very important. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again soon.